for you, a cane for you. I'm going to redo my capitalism, socialism, communist video because people say they can't hear my voice. This is what I call social studies for morons. Grown, white, middle-aged, male fucking morons. No, I mean, this is not third grade. This is lower than third grade. Okay? To all you Glenn Beck, fascist, freaking regurgitate whatever you want to make things up, here we go. Capitalism. The United States has never, ever, ever, not from one single day in its history, been pure capitalism. It has always been this. What is our quintessential purely, and, and don't you guys tack me, this is a five minute YouTube video. This is subject matter that, well, it takes most people a couple semesters and a couple classes, but apparently you far right freaking radio talk show listening freaks who have no clue, you couldn't learn if you wanted to because you're playing fucking stupid, okay? Socialism, we equate to the Scandinavian countries. I know it's more complicated than that. Communism, we equate to the old Soviet Union. Make no mistake about it, China is communism. They are communism. I mean, the, their wealth gets redistributed. I mean, in all ways, in all ways. Even if they have a so-called capitalistic business model, the wealth is still, now granted, the wealth is getting redistributed teeny, teeny, teeny to their slaves you employ, but we sure have never been that in history. The United States is a form of this. Do we swing between here and here? Oh yeah. 1929, we got in here a little bit. You know, right now we've got all this deregulation. But let's be clear, in a pure capitalistic society, you have no public militia or public army. None, zero, no public roads, no nothing. You know, you go back to Europe a thousand years ago, when it was pretty well a pure capitalistic society and one monarchy family ruled the entire continent. That's what pure capitalism, the strongest rules. The strongest army takes the resources, the strongest army takes the capital, the strongest army takes control of the masses. They do what they want to do. That's how pure capitalistic societies work. But the United States has always been a form of socialism. Hamilton and Jefferson, Washington, all of them debated this in the inception, how we were going to construct this and put it together, and they decided on a socialistic system. They decided on a public army, which is a socialism. The mass of the size of our public army is so socialistic right now. I mean, it's in here. Okay, our roads, our fire departments, our police departments, our schools, and pure capitalism, none of that exists. Zero. None. I mean, this ignorant spew about capitalism, you know, and I say, you know, in my other video, you heard me, I did that long, long ago. I say like this, you know, the food inspection, whatever. I like to use the airplane analogy, but you can find thousands of analogies. You know, in pure market capitalism, in this fairy tale, you know, rhetoric to the far right we've created, okay, if you're flying on an airplane and the uh, plane blows up in a pure market capitalist society, people quit flying, you know, another one blows up. What if you're on the plane? But you can find that analogy over and over and over and over. This spew is ridiculous. The United States has been termed guided capitalist, which is a term, just another fancy term for that. Socialism can go from here or over here. We have surely never been that. Never, not even close. Not even close. But do we support that system? Look, we fought the Korean, the Vietnam War, including my father, who was killed, fled and died for this country. We fought off the 17th parallel in Korea and Nam, fighting off the Chinese communism spreading across the country. So what did we do? When we signed NAFTA in 1994, we backdoored all that. We backdoored. So it's created this. this Make no mistake, this, the, the Chinese system, the communist system is there. You know, people say, well, they're cap they're not capitalist. Oh, no. We support this system. We support this system to make it a powerful communist system more and more. See, the Soviet communist system had problems because all the resources were going to money and the work incentive. Well, they have an incentive over there. They, ins they enslave their people. They tell them to go to work, and they have a huge incentive to sell us their cheap Chinese goods because we're buying them. So we're empowering them, blowing them up, and make no mistake about it. And if you do not believe this, what I'm going to say is true. You know nothing about world history. You know nothing about economics, and you have your head up your ass. Make no mistake about it. Economic wealth is followed by military wealth. It has every single power in the history of this country, world. From the time of man,
It's only a matter of time. But like I said, we have never been this mad at ourselves. I'm sick of hearing it. We are a form of socialism. Actually, from 1934 to 1980, we're pure. We're probably the most socialized system in the world. You know, the tax rates have declined all the way. Were people happy? We had the strongest middle class in the world. We had full health care because the employers, they had to give it. You know, the government didn't have to get involved in our health care then because when we have a full employment society, it was making the average worker in 1965, and today's dollars made nearly $100,000 a year. And today, the average worker, people give you throw out numbers 30, you know, household income 40, but those numbers are lies. The government uses lies, lies, lies on all of their data. The real household number is probably more like 20,000. They don't count the unemployed. They don't count the so-called illegal immigrant, which they allow people to pay cash to with a seraphine and wink and a nod. Look, government data, I love it. My favorite one, let's get into this for a second while I'm here. My favorite government fallacy number is inflation. Okay, we're talking inflation now, inflation. Now, Bernanke understands this, and make no mistake about it, the Fed is, was corrupted by Greenspan. Greenspan did this. Bernanke, when he got there, what does he do? You know, they're out of freaking bullet because he was lowering the rate when they should have been raising the rate. Let's talk about the Fed. The United States government will tell you that inflation from 2000 to 2008 ran at about 2.5-3% annualized. What a lie. What a lie. The dollar to the euro, what was it in 2000 when Bush stole the election? What was the dollar to the euro? What was gold? What was oil? The real inflation happened and the dollar was crashed the inflation. You draw a line right point, you ready to go right. 2003, 2004, 2005, 6, inflation went psychotic, 3.5%. The real inflation number went up probably 25%. The housing bubble, all of it. It just proves to you you cannot believe any government number. They are corrupt. They are corrupt. You cannot believe an earnings number. They are corrupt. You know, and if uh, Bear Stearns, Citigroup, and all their earnings reports in 2008 do not prove to you that they are liars and it's corrupt, and it's all legal corruption. You know, the, the country has been corrupt. The socialized system that we have, we regulate some industries and not other industries. You know, it's become a social enigma of corruption, of white collar crime is legal. This is a philosophical thing. This isn't this, or this, or this. This is good and evil. This has become a philosophical war that somehow white collar crime is not only legal, it is encouraged. But make no mistake, the United States has never been pure market capitalism. Not even close. Not even close. Just the fact, the debate, Jefferson, Hamilton, that you know, Jefferson was a, he wanted the freaking no public militia, no public army. Hamilton made the argument, he says, look, it is, it is ignorant to think our freaking shores will not be attacked for our vast natural resources. Now, if we weren't some kind of socialist system, would Hitler have won in World War II? I don't know, probably. You know, the United States, would they have failed? I don't know, probably. But we are a socialized system in the United States, and we've always been a form of socialism. Does it take different forms? It's a big encompass circle with lots of different tentacles going everywhere. I mean, you know, we use corporate welfare like crazy. Corporate welfare is socialism. Redistribution of wealth. You can talk redistribution through a welfare check to a piece of our food stamp. It dwarfs in the size of redistribution of wealth via corporate welfare or stimulus through business. I mean, it could take tons of it. It is philosophical. This circle encompasses a lot. And then it becomes to philosophical idealism. The radical spew about free market capitalism is so, much, it is so ridiculous, it's unbelievable. Stay tuned, you radical, ignorant fucks. Kevin Lynch.